family is one of the most successful families in Germany and in the world actually. Hi everyone, what is up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So it has been two weeks, well almost two weeks since I've uploaded a video on YouTube and I am so sorry you guys. Um, I was having technical issues with Final Cut and hopefully now everything is like cleared up on my computer and I won't have this problem ever again and I can finally get back to a regular uploading schedule. I mean I say this but it's something always comes up in my life that makes me not upload a video for so long but now the problem has been fixed. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about American brands that are owned by Germans. This was a very interesting topic for me because I was researching something, a brand, that Mike and I frequent often here in the United States and that we really enjoy. Once I was doing my research, I found out that it was actually owned by a German company. I'll talk about it later in the video, but it led me into this rabbit hole of information about companies that are created in one country, but yet they're owned later on, been sold, purchased, whatever it may be, by another country or by another co corporation in another country. Give this video a thumbs up if you like these types of videos, these informative educational videos, a little bit more serious than what I'm talking about or usually I'm um, talking about and also don't take anything I say too serious because this is not my area of specialty or expertise This is just something that I found very interesting and I'm relaying the the information that I read to you guys So which means if I got something wrong, just kindly let me know kindly emphasis on kindly Let me know in the comments down below to start this off We're gonna have to know two words which are really important in this whole scheme of I guess businesses And that is a parent or holding company versus a subsidiary and a parent or holding company, as you can probably tell, owns a subsidi subsidiary. And a subsidiary is, I guess I would call like the child of a parent company. Why would a parent company want a subsidiary? Why would it want to make it a little bit more difficult, add bureaucracy, add more paperwork and admin costs to the business that they own? I think the two major reasons for that are due to liabilities and profit. When someone creates a business, they are usually 99.9% .9 of the time creating it for profit. You can disagree with me. This is a personal opinion. There are no facts to this. A lot of people think that a parent company is gaining something or is controlling 1000% the subsidiary and everything that it does and when doing research and reading about the companies that's usually not the case from what I've seen in a lot of these companies that I'm about to list they have kept their managing practices and not necessarily been forced by the parent company to change how they manage or operate I think I've done enough speaking about how companies function and how this all works out so yeah, the first company is going to be Trader Joe's. It is an American company. It was made in the United States, you guys, and it was purchased, I wanna say, by Aldi. Now, Aldi is a German brand that a lot of people know. A lot of people differentiate it between Aldi Nord and Aldi Süd, but they are both owned by the big Aldi Einkauf GmbH. Trader Joe's is a prime example of how companies, parent companies, leave and let you know, corporations and organizations that, are, that they acquire stay how they are. Trader Joe's is nothing like Aldi to me. Trader Joe's actually for me in Florida where I live is a nicer supermarket with premium products sometimes. There are products that I cannot afford at Trader Joe's or I would just not buy at Trader Joe's because they're a little bit more expensive than their competitors. And when you think of Aldi, you think of uh, you know discount you think of cheaper prices more affordable all that good stuff there are some Aldi's that I've been into that are not the typical Aldi affordable supermarket shopping experience but most of them that I have been into I could not compare them to a Trader Joe's I want to say that the Aldi family is one of the most successful families in Germany and in the world actually they have like a 50 billion um, revenue every year plus or minus and that is crazy you guys to think of how much money are in supermarkets like that and they're operated all over the world um, mostly in Germany in Austria in Italy I've seen some in the United States they're popping up like hotcakes you guys the next one is going to be a little bit harder for me to try to explain to you guys <sighs> so hopefully I get it right but dial which is America's number one trusted soap brand of soap it's a household name and everyone's house that I've been in has dial soap or everyone that I know has used dial soap 
soap before and it was made many many decades ago but it was acquired by Henkel. Now Henkel has a North American I guess subsidiary as well but Henkel, I think Angi and Co that is what owns the whole brand of Dot dial and they're like their owner north hankel north america Ugh, so much information i'm pretty sure that hankel has like a th three billion dollar profit operating profit which is crazy and which is a huge amount of money you know it never ceases to amaze me how much money is in the world i i'm not the type of person that can just think it out of like my head i can't imagine it in my head but once i see numbers it really like i i'm taken aback by how much money is out there dial number one trusted american brand soap is technically owned by germans now the next brand which is what i was doing my research on and it's a place that mike and go mike and i go often which is krispy kreme <laughs> krispy kreme is technically owned by jab holding company which is a german conglomerate that is located in luxembourg and i'm pretty sure that companies are in luxembourg when they're based in another country like that always for me it's a sign of like tax evasion but the legal term for it is a tax haven they have very lenient not so strict tax policies in certain countries luxembourg i think happens to be one of them jab holding is actually very huge it's a very big group of different companies that's what conglomerate means and it owns stuff like dr pepper it owns Panera Bread, it owns Krispy Kreme, I think it owns Peeps Coffee, I could be wrong, but it just owns so many different brands, you guys, and so many different things. And it is technically German, but based in Luxembourg. The last brand, you guys, which is a brand that I wanted to include because it is a 100% wholly owned subsidiary of the parent company. I think Hankel is as well, but I just, I knew 1000% that this one was 100% wholly owned subsidiary and I didn't know 1000% if the other ones were or not. It was just to give you a little bit more information and like go a little bit more into depth and detail about it because usually when companies have subsidiaries, they own percentages and I mean, it's common to own 100%, but not as common to not own 100% if you know what I'm talking about. The last one is going to be Freightliner. And when I think of Freightliner, I think of like American prestige and like American just pure. And it is a truck brand that everyone knows in the United States or everyone that cares about that knows. And they are owned by one of the biggest brands or company names in Germany, and that is Daimler. Everyone knows Daimler by Mercedes and by Smart. They own a lot more other things, a lot of other brands and whatnot, but two of the most important ones are Mercedes and Smart. But Daimler has a North American truck subsidiary which owns Freightliner. So Daimler has like its humongous Daimler, and then it has like its little North American branch, and in that North American branch is the North American truck branch, which technically owns Freightliner. But yeah, this is very common information actually, and this is very common business practices in this day and age. So it's not like I'm telling you guys something that is, I don't know, something that you shouldn't know or something that is new to the world. This is just something that I feel like isn't spoken about on a daily, regular basis. And I feel like it should because it be, it lets consumers, I guess, be more aware of where their purchasing power is going and how important their purchasing power is because you're technically giving money to corporations that already have billions of dollars that don't really need it. And for me, this type of stuff makes me realize how much I need to shop at like smaller stores and not always buy stuff from Amazon or from Aldi or from all these places that I've listed. It doesn't even have to be from like one country or another. It makes me realize how small businesses, how much money is out there for small businesses basically. So yeah, um, I guess this was like a small business <laughs> video. Don't know where that was headed, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, you can give me a thumbs up. Um, love you guys so much. Have a wonderful day and bye-bye.